my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today's Tuesday and I have another thrift flip for you guys. I completed five projects for today's video. All of them were relatively simple makeovers, but they all turned out really, really cute and I can hardly wait to show them to you. I hope you guys like them and without further ado, let's get to today's projects. My first project is a very simple one. I've had these two glass bottles on my shelf for a long time now, and I figured it was time I did something with them and got them out on the floor. So I grabbed the transfer set by Redesign with Prima. This one's called Tiny Flowers, and they had some perfect long flowers that I thought would be great on these bottles. So I grabbed out the first one. This is some lavender, and I am just simply sticking that down and then using that transfer stick to apply that transfer to the front of the first bottle and then I cut out some other flowers that were kind of long as well to go on the second bottle. Really easy process. These transfers stick wonderfully to glass so it was actually really simple to get them uh, adhered down. Once I had the transfers down and they were burnished in really well, I thought the bottles could use a little bit more. And so I went into my stash and I pulled out some strips of a flower sack cloth that I've had hanging around for a while. I actually uh, stained the flower sack cloth with some coffee and then had set it out to dry and then just tore it into strips. I added a little bit of, of lace to this and then I did a small version of my lasagna ribbons where I just laid one piece of flower sack cloth and lace and then another piece of flower sack cloth and then I simply tied these really tight with a double knot uh, to the neck of each of the bottles. Once they were tied down I took some scissors and just made sure all the ends were the same length and then I did the exact same thing to that second bottle just again tying it in a nice tight double knot and then trimming off the bottoms so that the lengths were all the same. As a last step, I grabbed a little bit of bling out of my stash and glued that to the knot on each of the bottles. And I love how these came out. I think they'll be a perfect addition to my spring displays. For project two, I have another simple makeover. I've had these salt and pepper shakers for quite some time now, and they had some uh, damage in their original finish and definitely needed a redo. So I decided to just keep it simple with some paint. So I'm using DIY's crinoline for the salt shaker and then DIY's farm fresh for the pepper shaker. Now this is a very dark color that I'm going over but thankfully DIY paint is very very highly pigmented and so it only took me two coats uh, of paint to go over both of these. So I let it dry thoroughly in between and then just went over each one with a second coat of paint. Now just a reminder, any of the paint and products you see me use in today's video can be purchased through me at my website at www.TheEclecticCottageSpokane.com. Once I had these guys painted, I decided to give them a little bit of distressing. I also wanted to sand off a few of the brush, brush stroke marks. Uh, the other thing with DIY paint is it is a very thick paint. It's clay based and it dries super hard. And so I'm using just a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper here to just smooth that finish out a touch. I also went ahead and did some distressing. I wanted to bring back some of that beautiful dark brown color uh, from underneath the paint on these. Once I had that finished and I was happy with my distressing, I did take a little uh, screwdriver and make sure that all the salt shaker holes were clear of any paint, finished them up, and then I gave them a good bath with a damp shop towel just to wipe off any of that sanding dust. 
I also took the opportunity to do just a little bit more wet distressing on these as I was washing them down. Then I set them aside and let them dry again very thoroughly before I moved on to sealing my paint. Now, as I've stated before, DIY paint is clay based and can be reactivated with water. So it's very important that you always seal your pieces. And for these, I chose DIY's Big Top as my sealer. Big Top is a great durable sealer. It will make these so that if you need to wipe them off, it will be really simple. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it as opposed to the waxes, which tend to be a lot more matte. Uh, and I just like the feel of the Big Top. I love the fact that it's going to uh, be a good protector uh, if these get you know banged around in the kitchen or thrown in a drawer or a cupboard or anything like that. Once I'm done applying one good coat of Big Top, these guys will be finished. I absolutely love how they came out. Relatively simple, but they'll be so pretty in somebody's kitchen. Project three is another pretty simple makeover. I grabbed two more small clay pots out of my stash. And for these, I decided I wanted whoever purchased them to actually be able to plant a plant in them. So I'm starting off giving these one good coat of this Rust-Oleum glaze inside and outside. Now, according to the label, this should make these pots waterproof and definitely protect the paint and decor that I will be putting on the outside of them. Then it was on to painting these guys and I chose two different colors again. I'm using DIY's crinoline on one of the pots and then DIY's faded burlap on the other. I'm kind of careful when I paint pots to keep my brush strokes all going around the pot. I don't know. I'm just kind of funny. I like them all to be going in the same direction when I'm finished. And so I ended up giving these each two good coats of the paint uh, before moving on to the next step. Then I went into my stash of open transfers and I found this one called French Labels. It's by Redesign with Prima. And I found two perfect uh, transfers for the front of each of these pots. So I laid the first one down and just as always started using that transfer stick to uh, push that transfer down into the paint while I pulled that piece of vellum off, just making sure that all of my pieces adhered correctly to the pot. Then I moved on to the second one, uh, another really cute little transfer. And again, just same procedure, using that transfer stick to push it down, peeling that piece of vellum off. With this one, I had to be really careful. There were some very small pieces of the image. And so just had to really watch as I was pulling that piece of vellum to make sure I didn't accidentally remove any of my transfer. Once I had those down, I burnished them in really well, and then it was time to seal my pots. For these, I am choosing wax, so I am going over both of these pots one at a time with a coat of clear wax first, and then wiping back any excess. And then once that is done, I'm grabbing my DIY dark wax and going over these with a coat of dark wax. I'm also using a little bit of mineral spirits. I usually will kind of dip my brush into the mineral spirits and use that to thin out the wax as I'm putting it down. I wanted this to be uh, closer to its original crinoline color. And so I'm kind of using the mineral spirits to really, really thin out that wax so that I can wipe quite a bit of it back down. Down. I still wasn't super crazy about how dark it was so I ended up grabbing my clear wax brush and just brushing some clear wax on the great thing about clear wax is it acts almost like an eraser over the dark wax and you can use it to loosen up your wax and take a little bit off at a time and it was on to the other pot same procedure just going over it with a coat of the clear wax first wiping back the excess and then again using some thinned uh, dark wax to go over that and then wiping back the excess again with a shop towel. 
This was such an easy transformation and I absolutely love how these guys came out. My fourth project is the one that ended up taking a lot more time than I had set aside for it. It was this cute little bunny and this thing had a finish on it that was kind of like little beads and unfortunately some of the beads had been worn off in places so there were little patches of where it was flat and then other patches where some of the beads were kind of chipping off and it was just kind of a mess. Now, I had hoped that by giving a really thick coat of paint to this rabbit using DIY's clay-based paint, that it would help to even out some of the finish. I really was expecting far too much from a paint, though, uh, because even though it helped, it definitely wasn't a solution. So it was on to plan B. I grabbed out my stencil fiber paste by Redesign with Prima and I began using my fingers to apply a very thin coat of the fiber paste all over uh, this little bunny. Now, I have never used fiber paste for anything other than a stencil, but I was familiar with its texture and I knew it would dry rock hard. And so I thought it would be a good solution for this rabbit. I also used my Mr. Bottle and just a little bit of water to help smooth it out a bit as it is a fiber paste. It does have some texture to it. And I really wanted this bunny to be as smooth as I could possibly get it. And there's Salty, of course, helping me out with my project today. Once I had it pretty well smoothed, I set it aside to dry. And once I was confident that it was dried thoroughly, I did grab a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper and I went over some of the areas that were still just a little bit rough with that sandpaper to smooth everything out again. Once I'd finished sanding the rabbit, it was time to go over it with another coat of paint. And I had actually changed my mind. I kind of liked it this white color. So rather than going back to the original Farm Fresh color, I am using DIY's White Swan this go around. So I'm just pouncing that paint on with kind of a stiffer bristled brush. Using a really thick coat of paint, there were definitely still a few areas where it was just a tad rough and I was trying my best to blend those in as best as possible. Once I'd completely covered Mr. Bunny with one good coat of DIY's White Swan and it was thoroughly dry again, it was time to move on to sealing my paint. I started with a layer of DIY's clear wax. I'm just putting that on with my uh, soft bristle brush, just getting it on into all the little grooves and nooks and crannies, and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel. Lastly, I decided to add a layer of dark wax to this rabbit just to bring out some of the detail and add a little bit of aged patina. I did thin out my dark wax quite a bit with mineral spirits before putting it on and I just worked in sections putting a little bit of that dark wax on and then using my shop towel and instead of wiping it off I'm basically dabbing it off that way more of the dark wax actually stays put in some of the little grooves and nooks and crannies. Then I just continued working my way around the entire rabbit, adding a little bit of dark wax, dabbing it off with my shop towel. And then in certain areas, I would just add a little bit more wax, especially in places that I really wanted it to look shadowed, like under his little arms and along his legs there. It's funny how the dark wax kind of highlighted some of the imperfections in this piece but it made it almost look like a handmade statue and I absolutely love the way it ended up turning out. My 
fifth and final project is another pretty simple one. I have this galvanized tray that I've had for a bit in my stash and I wanted to preserve the wood handles so I went ahead and covered them with some painters tape and then I just gave it a good primer coat of Rust-Oleum 2X spray in white. And the reason I did that is so that it would help cover up that black writing in the bottom without having to use too much of my more expensive paints. Then I went over the spray paint on the bottom with one coat of the cottage color in vintage linen and I used the cottage color because it has a built-in sealer and I knew I wanted to decoupage over it and this way I wouldn't have to worry about my decoupage medium reactivating my paint. Then I grabbed out this gorgeous decoupage paper by Roy Cycled Treasures called Vintage Wallpaper, laid it in the bottom, and then I used my fingernail to just trace along the edges so that I had a nice clean line to cut out. Once I had my piece cut out, I went ahead and misted the back with a little bit of water, and then I began using my Liquid Patina by DIY to add that decoupage medium to the bottom of the tray. I just start in about a two inch strip across the bottom, laid my paper down carefully exactly where I wanted it, and then used my paintbrush with another coat of the Liquid Patina over the top to smooth my paper out. Once I had that first strip of paper well adhered and coated with a second coat of patina, I worked my way down the rest of the tray, adding about a two inch strip of liquid patina in a nice thin layer, and then using my paintbrush and some more liquid patina to smooth out the paper as I went. Once my decoupage paper was completely dry, I went in with DIY's paint in the color Faded Burlap to paint the sides of the tray. Very carefully, just painting right up to the edges of the decoupage paper. This color is almost a perfect match for some script that's kind of light in the background of this paper and it also coordinates with the colors that I've been using for the rest of today's projects so I thought it was the perfect choice for this tray. I did end up going over the sides of this tray with two coats of faded burlap, letting it dry very well in between each coat. And once the second coat was dry, I went in and sealed my paint. For this, I did decide to go with DIY's Big Top. Again, it's a very durable sealer. And I went ahead and went over the bottom of the tray as well, just to give it that extra layer of protection. I really love how this little tray came out and I hope you guys do too. it 
from here for today, you guys. I hope you liked my projects and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And if you haven't already, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Then don't forget to drop a comment below and let me know which of the projects in today's video your favorite was. For Friday, it's probably going to be much the same. I'm going to pull more items out of my stash and try to get them made over. So please join me on Friday for that. Uh, and then just a reminder, any of the paint products you saw me use in today's video can be purchased through me at my website. And that's www.TheEclecticCottageSpokane.com. Dot com. I'm out of a couple DIY products at the moment. I should be getting my order in any day now. Um, I'm also expecting a full order from Recycled Decoupage Papers. So um, I should be restocked on those soon as well. And then Redesign with Prima announced that on March 26th, we will finally get to see what quarter two new releases are coming. So I can hardly wait to see what they are and get to share those with you guys. Anyway, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I know mine was very busy. We uh, planted up a whole bunch of tomato babies into bigger pots. And then yesterday I spent my entire day out in my yard working in one of my big gardens and man, I'm sore today. <laughs> so anyway, and then of course our weather is supposed to tank. They're talking about possibility of snow on Sunday. So we'll see. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you'll join me back here on Friday for that video. And until then, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I'll see you Friday. Bye.